and welcome to our worship our spiritual communion for today transfiguration sunday and also st valentine's day i wonder what you've all been up to for st valentine's day whether you've been sharing cards or wishes to each other uh, it's wonderful to have you with us for our service today i'm going to pass over to julie who will be leading us this morning good morning and welcome to our transfiguration sunday spiritual communion in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. We say together, Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you, no secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We say together. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so the Collect for the Dead. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness, from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on the way to Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elijah said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah, Elijah came to him. Elijah, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. And they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two men crossed onto dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken, to, taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit 
a double share of your spirit. He responded, you, asked, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted for you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. <clears throat> Elijah kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 50, verses 1 to 6. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness to for God himself is judge. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings. One f Let's make three dwellings for you. One for Moses, one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, happy St. Valentine's Day to you all. Somebody might have said that to you already today. You may have said it to somebody else, but from me to you, happy Valentine's Day. 
I'm not sure what St. Valentine would have made of the event that has grown up around his name, but behind all the cardboard cut-out hearts and chocolates is a message of love that translates beyond the decorated shop windows and the romantic dinners for two that we're encouraged to buy into. There is a love that family members share. There is a love that you can find between friends. There's romantic love, the burning pulsing of a new love and the slow and steady heat of a love that has matured over the decades. There is a love that you can feel to the depths of your core when you are standing on a mountain top watching the sun rise on a new day. <coughs> Excuse me. Valentine's Day can help to shine a light on what is deep in our hearts, a desire to be loved. It's hardwired into our very creation. We're told God saw what he created and it was good. We were created to love one another, to love creation and also to love God. We are able to love purely because we are loved first. Now, there are several different translations of the word love in the New Testament. When you read it in the ancient Greek, that is, you can press pause if you like and you can check if I'm right. I make no excuses for my pronunciation. But we've got agape, which is a sort of charitable, selfless love. And then there's philia, which is a love that you do find between friends, non-romantic. And then there's the word stork, which means a natural affection, although in the New Testament it's only really used in the negative term, astorgos, or lacking natural affection, as can be read in 2 Timothy 3. Now, C.S. Lewis wrote about this in his book, The Four Loves, and in his own introductory chapter he wrote, and I'm quoting, God is love, says St. John, when I, C.S. Lewis, First try to write this book, I thought that his maxim would provide me with a very plain high road through the whole subject. I thought I should be able to say that human loves deserve to be called loves at all, just in so far as they resemble that love which is God. He carried on to say, the reality is more complicated than I supposed. It's a good book if you happen to pick it up and if you know your Narnia books then you know that C.S. Lewis wrote about the different loves that we can encounter fairly comprehensively but it does go into the difficulties of having a single word in English and different flavours of the same word in an original text that we can encounter and we can read so much into the different translations we can look for meanings in words try to understand the message being told to us and to be honest maybe even making it a wee bit more complicated than it needs to be in rome archaeologists have uncovered a church in the catacombs dedicated to saint valentine apparently maybe not this year but they open it every year to the public on the 14th now we do know that saint valentine was martyred in the third century for converting people to christianity He's said to have healed a young girl, the daughter of a judge who had him under house arrest. He restored her sight. And the Catholic Church recognised his faith, well, by <laughs> making him a saint. He witnessed his faith during his life by serving the church. And he witnessed the depth of his convictions by his martyrdom. He loved God and church so much that he refused to renounce his faith in the face of death. Now I'm not sure why, but St. Valentine became associated with courtly love in about the Middle Ages. And we can throw another ancient Greek word into the mix, eros. And we know where the root of that goes in English. But my point is, is that there are nuances in words and their translations that can be quite easily overlooked. In our reading today, we hear that God addresses the disciples. He says to them, this is my son whom I love. In some translations, the words, my beloved are used. How evocative are those words? 
This is my son, my beloved. I love this chap, God's saying. Look at him there, my beloved. I know that when I look at my own children, the feeling that grips my heart is so painful sometimes that I just can't find the words. And God loves us that much that he gave us his only son. Yes, I'm jumping into a bit of John's gospel there, sorry. But we know how the story ends. Well, not ends so much as it's still ongoing in our lives today. But Jesus loved God and us so much that not even death had dominion over him. To truly love someone is to want what's best for them. Actually, it's more than that. To love someone is to really selflessly will what's best for them, to will the good of the other. So whether we're talking about romantic fluffy love or Jesus love, it comes back to the same selfless idea of wanting what's best for the other person. To will the good of the other isn't just loving them, it's not a static thing, but an actual conscious choice. Now, I love my family, goes without saying. I love my friends and my colleagues. I love my neighbours and I love the stranger on the street. So, for their best interests right now, I choose to wash my hands till the skin's cracking and to wear a blessed face mask, even though it steams my glasses, can be really uncomfortable, sometimes aggravates my asthma, but I do it. In the words of Mr Spock, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And when we look at Valentine's Day through the lens of our Christian faith, we can see the bone deep human desire to love and to be loved. And in its best examples, that love really does show a selflessness that puts the good of the other first. It encourages the flourishing of a human in our entirety mind, body and soul. And we should never be embarrassed, ashamed or afraid for those words to come from our lips. I love you. Because what they are is a reflection of the relationship that God has with us. And the reality is, is that God is love in whatever translation of the word you choose to use. And a special day isn't needed for us to hear that. So, whether you've heard the words I love you today for Valentine's or not, please just know that God is saying, I love you. Amen. We say together the affirmation of faith. I believe and trust in God the Father, who created all that is. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Lord, let your light shine in our lives. Let its brightness fill our hearts and transfigure us. That, seeing your glory, we may come to you in awe and wonder and gazing upon you may be changed into your likeness, moving from glory to glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit is in eternal glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, Lord of light, transfigure us. Increase our vision and reveal to us your glory. May your church seek to transform our darkness places with your light. May we seek out the lost and the deprived, the poor and the rejected, and bring them home to you and your love. We pray for the mission and outreach of the whole church. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Lord of Light, transfigure our towns and our cities. We pray for areas of danger, for places of vice, for poor housing and for the street dwellers. 
Lord, transform our places of poverty and change our attitudes for the better towards each other. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of light, come transfigure our homes, that they may be radiant with your presence. Make them homes of peace and kindliness, of holiness and hospitality, of grace and goodness, that you may be known to be among us. And at this time of COVID-19, may they be a place of safe haven for us all. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of light and love, transfigure our hospitals and nursing homes. We thank you for our NHS at this very difficult time. We ask you, Lord, that you keep all the doctors and nurses battling against COVID-19 in our prayers. And we thank you for all the work that they are doing. We pray for all whose lives are marred by evil or tragedy. We pray for all who are downcast or fearful. We remember all who await a doctor's diagnosis or an operation, and especially at this time for those whose operations are cancelled. Those who are suffering cancer, who cannot be given the life-saving treatment that they so desperately need. We ask you, Lord, that you be with them at this time. We pray for all who seek healing and hope. And remember those in our own parish. We remember Bella Hodson, Eric Owen, Jim Price, Dave Middleton, and Molly Ashton. Lord, in your mercy, We give thanks for all who have passed beyond death and have been transformed in your glorious kingdom. For the saints, for our benefactors, for loved ones departed, that we may come to the fullness of your presence. Remember all those at this time who are known to us, all those who have died. We hold them in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of light, transfigure our governments at this very difficult time. But we thank you for all the work that they are doing to bring the vaccines out at record speed. We thank you for the work of Boris Johnson, for Matt Hancock, and for Simon Hart, our Welsh Secretary as they fight not only to keep Britain safe, but to keep Wales safe. And we thank them for their undying work to help us get through this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. In a moment of silence, let us offer up our own prayers to God, our own thoughts, our own petitions. Lord, in your mercy. And, and we say the prayer of coronavirus together. The text should be on your screen. God, heal the world, fill empty hearts, feed the hungry, free lost souls, fight the coronavirus, forge us towards peace. For Jesus Christ's sake we pray. Amen. And so we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Prayer of Humble Access We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, 
trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. And so we come to our notices today, just to let you know that um, on um, Ash Wednesday, we've got a YouTube video for our Ash service. It's at six o'clock and it's all going to be put together. So you'll be able to watch it as a YouTube video. But what we thought we'd do is, because obviously we can't meet for Ash Wednesday this year. So if you're any good at making ashes at home, if you've got any bits of card or anything like that, that you can put your ashes together, all you need is a tiny bit of ash and a little bit of water. And then when it comes to the part of the service, when we're doing the ashing, as you watch it on YouTube, if you can either ash yourself, I think that'll probably be the best way at the moment. And then what I thought would be lovely after the ashing service is if you can, the type of person who could take a picture of yourself with your ashes on your forehead, and I'll put a little pin to the top post on our Facebook page on the parish of Connors Quay, and we'll have pictures of everybody who's done ashing for the day on there. Uh, I think that'll be a lovely way just to show people that we've been able to have some sort of Ash Wednesday service. It won't be a long one, but it will be on YouTube. And what I'll do is I'll make sure everybody has it on Ash Wednesday morning, ready for us to join together in the evening and watch it and go through and do our little Ash, Ash Wednesday things. I think it'll be quite good. And then, of course, we go into Lent after that. Now, we're going to be having our spiritual communions up to then. I've, I've not found out yet when we're getting together, but I'm praying and hoping we're together for Easter Sunday, which will be a pre-bookable service like it was for Christmas. But it would be lovely to get everybody back for Easter. Um, so we're going to be doing spiritual communions for the next couple of weeks. But there are other things going on in the meantime, because obviously we're going to be in Lenten after Ash Wednesday. So we'll have our... Um, Pray and chat this next week, which is also Ash Wednesday in the morning, remember, is uh, Stephen's doing it because I've got a funeral. So it's, there'll be a different passcode. So if you check at the end of this service or on your pew sheets, you will see what the sign in is for pray and chat this week. And then, of course, we've got dial a sermon as normal and the local to the price of a local call, which is 01244 268 428. And then after that, during Lent, what we're going to do is we're going to have a Lent Compline, which will be every um, Wednesday evening on Zoom. And that will be at eight o'clock. But what we will do for those people who can't get onto Zoom is we'll record the service. So you'll be able to have Compline as well whenever you want then, because it'll be eight o'clock and it's about 20 minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll put it directly onto YouTube and send out the link. So if you want to do um, Compline from home during Lent, you're very, very, very welcome to do that because the service will be there for you to, to dip into. We've got quite a few funerals sadly coming up still so I'm just going to name those people now and off we offer all their families and their loved ones in prayer. So we've got Ronald Fish which is Monday the 15th of Feb which is at 1.30 at St Mark's. Tony Ashton Tuesday the 16th of Feb 1.30 at St Mark's. Susan Baker Wednesday the 17th of February which is 10 o'clock at Northup. And Ivor Wilson, Saturday the 20th of February, 11 o'clock at Northup. Kenneth Gould, Tuesday the 23rd of February, 11am at St Mark's. And Amanda Harris, Thursday the 25th of February, 11am at St Mark's. Uh, and of course, we keep all of you in our prayers during this time. Uh, birthdays this coming week, Doug Potts, Diana Porter, Doreen Clark and Pat Griffiths. You've all got birthdays. And if you hang on a minute, I've got my little... Um, <laughs> Well, I'll say that. I think it's actually gone. <laughs> I, wrote, I found it right under the chair. But I did not want to do it, since as I'm doing the notices from home today. So, Doug, Diana, Doreen and, and Pat, here you go. Happy birthday. That's for you. There we go, just in case you didn't see it across the screen. I'm now going to ask you just to bow your heads as we pray for those people. Lord, we give you our thanks for Dougie, for Diana, for Doreen and for Pat. We pray that you would be with them, particularly just this time at the moment with the lockdowns. 
and we pray for them and their families. Lord, bless them in this year ahead. May they know your love inside them. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. That's great. So I think that's it for the notices. And we're going to head over now for the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. And we share with one another a sign of that peace. God bless. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging Your love is a mountain from beneath my feet Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me When I am surrounded, your love carries me Hallelujah It's growing deep inside of me Every time I see you All your goodness shines through I can feel this God song Rising up in me We celebrate together the gifts and grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine to follow Christ's example and obey his command. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is always right, wherever we are, to thank you and to praise you, God, our Father and King forever, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him you made us and the whole universe. When your Holy Spirit came to Mary, Jesus was born as one of us. He loved us so much that he died for us. On the first Easter day, you raised him to life, and death and evil were conquered forever. At Pentecost, you gave the Holy Spirit, as Jesus promised to help us live as your children. So here on earth with angels and archangels and with everyone in heaven, we praise your name and say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Father in heaven, listen to the prayer we make in Jesus' name. Through the Holy Spirit's power, gentle as a dove, may this bread and this wine be for us Jesus' body and blood. Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took the bread, he thanked you, broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends and said, Drink from this cup, because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. And so let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. 
So we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we say our spiritual communion together. O oh, blessed Lord, in union with the faithful throughout the world, at every altar of your church where the Eucharist is being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with an earnest wish that may always be united to you. Since I cannot now receive you in the sacrament, I invite you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, embrace you with heart and mind and soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me, so that I may live and die in your love. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, guard your hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.